the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above, while mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering. They're, the just, they're just tested, so they haven't gotten it I back yet. And God, I went to yeah. test. What a difference. <laughs> I went, I found there's nowhere to go test for COVID right now. Um, and I found this, this place down in San Diego. So I drove yesterday morning, and um, the line was like around the corner because uh, all those people that want to travel back home, they're trying to get a test so they can go home. And, um, and so I was able to test, and it was negative. My daughter, Crystal, who was kind of like the worst of the family, she got tested yesterday, came out negative. So thank God. Um, so keep on praying for um, all of the people that you know and if you are at home, because of that, it, it doesn't have to be COVID. Just let us know so we can pray for you. Um, but thank you for those that are here. You're brave to be here and uh, keep your mask on as you are able. Um, that way we can keep others safe. So please stand as you're able. Look around and say, good morning. 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 Very good. <laughs> Thank you. 
The sermon today is titled uh, Revealing God's Will as we get in the preparation for Epiphany. So um, please stand as you're able so we confess our sins to not only one another but to God since uh, we are ready to open up our worship. If you're at home, you can join us as you can see the screen on the, um, the, the, the confession on the screen. We gather in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we approach the manger, we humble heart, with humble hearts, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humble repent. And our compassions forgive us as our sins, known and unknown. Things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare ourselves for this worship, let us worship Jesus with this hymn, Infant, Holy, Infant, Lowly. Infant, Holy, Infant, Lowly, for his bed a cattle stall, oxen lowing, little knowing, Christ the child is Lord of all. Swiftly winging, angels singing, bells are ringing, tidings ringing, Christ the child is Lord of all. Christ the child is Lord of all. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping, vigil till the morning new. Saw the glory, hear the story, tidings of a gospel true. Those rejoicing, free from sorrow, praises, voices, greet the morrow. Christ the child was born for you. Christ the child was born for you. So for Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. you may be seated as we prepare our hearts for the prayer of the day. And um, if you have your Bible, you can always open up the Bible for the readings of the day as you follow um, through the message. Um, and uh, if you don't have your Bible, you can always pull up your phone and find that app called Bible Gateway and find the NRSV, which is the Bible version that we use here at first. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnated word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please open your Bibles. Ephesians 1, 3 to 14. Blessed be the God of the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasures that he sent forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, 
things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplished all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. This is the gospel according to John. John 1, 1 to 18. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the words was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came throughout Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only son who is close to the father's heart who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When I was a kid, I, I admired a lot of people. And one of my, my uh, favorite people was the guy that will drive one of those um, big machines to open up um, trenches. Uh, what is it called? Excavator. And I said, when I, wanna, when I grew up, I want to be one of those people who will drive one of those. And I remember that the one toy I want my mom to buy me was one of those toys. So I can play with them, pretend to be that. As I got uh, older, I like money. And I say, where do I get money? Well, if I become a businessman, I'll have a lot of money. And I um, started business, business administration. By age 14, when I turned 15, I was already in college. And uh, my first year in getting my business administration, I skipped a lot of the schooling boring part. It's not boring now. I, I just It was boring there. And so... Um, I wanted to, to become this businessman and, and make a lot of money. Um, when my, should I step back? Um, I want, because a lot of people are at home, I want to be able to talk to them as well. So there you are. Um, so I, I looked for that. I, I, I searched that and I wanted to be that. Um, when my mother was working here already and she called me and said do you want to come over to the states and and work i said but you know i'm doing this thing 
You know, I want to make money. He goes, well, you're going to make mo- more money here. I'm like, put me down. So I continue business here. And later on, I got into fitness somehow. And I'm like, what if I, instead of opening up hotels, which was my dream, I was into opening up restaurants and hotels. I'm like, that's going to be a, a moneymaker. So then I, I was like, what if I, instead of that, I start opening up gymnasiums, you know, where people come and work out and I can hire trainers and all that. And I had it all like figured out. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. So I started uh, searching and going and talking to gym owners and uh, trainers. And I realized it'll make a lot of money. So I'm like, never mind. Continue with the business. Um, and doing all of that. I begin to work and help in this church. Not as a pastor, but just uh, helping the pastor that was here. And somehow, God revealed something to me that it was more important than money. And, uh, and I felt like that was not only my calling, but that's, that was my purpose, to share God's love in this way. So I begin, you know, searching and looking. How do I become a pastor? And somebody asked me this past week, Pastor, do you think you're already doing God's will and fulfilling God's purpose? And I said, well, every day there's something new. Every day there's something new that the Lord puts in front of you to fulfill that purpose. So it keeps changing. One thing I know is that God's will for me, it comes down to God loves me, and he wants me to know. God wants me to know that God loves me. So that's the first thing you want to take note today, that God loves you. And that's the will of God, for you to know that. And that's why we're here. And that's what Jesus came 2,000 years ago. And that's why we celebrate Christmas and Easter. And that's why we celebrate every Sunday. Because God demonstrates God's love to us. So that's the first thing we need to know. God's will is for us to know that he loves us. For God so loved the world, right? You know that verse. And two, it's not only for you to know that God loves you, but to respond to that love. To respond to that love and loving God and loving God your neighbor. So I hope that through this message, you're able to fine-tune into that. What is the will of God? I hope you get inspired. Inspired to understand the will of God. Now, the, the will of God and the purpose of your life is different. I'm sure you probably, just like me, what is my purpose? Why am I here for on this earth? Right? And you probably read Rick Warren, Pastor Rick Warren's book many times, trying to figure out, why are you here for? Well, the first thing is to know that God loves you. God gave his only son for one thing, to show God's love to us and to give us the gift that we couldn't obtain on our own, the everlasting life. So through Jesus... We are obtaining that. And through Jesus, we are revealed God's love. So how do do we know then? How do we know what is the will of God? Look 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 at the ministry of Jesus. Look at the life of Jesus. Look at the, look at the, uh, death and the resurrection of Jesus. He fulfilled God's will. When he was praying to take away that moment of the cross, he said, no, Lord, don't let my will to be done by yours. And I think that's key for us. Because through Jesus, God will reveal to us what's the will of God. And how important it is for you to fulfill your purpose. In knowing that. You know, I went to visit 
John span is 101, right? And um, I saw him there, and he's already in hospice. And you know, John he always he will always have that spirit. You know, so joyful of life, and so ready to be in the presence of God. Talk about fulfilling God's will and, I mean, uh, knowing God's will and fulfilling God's purpose, right? But um, in praying with him, I shared this, let me see if this works. I shared this passage with him from Romans. One more. There you go. Um, as I was talking to him, I said, John, you know this. You preached it. You talk to people about this. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Now, at this time, he's not responding, either because of the meds that he's taken, but he did say, he's laying sideways, eyes closed, he did say, Amen. When I told him that nothing could separate us from the love of God. Nothing. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor hate, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. He knows that. And I want you to know that. For us to know that God loves us is step one in knowing God's will. Step two is to do God's will. Step two is to be able to respond to that. And as we know, as we know, when you look at Jesus' ministry, he brought it back to two commandments. Love God, love your neighbor. Do you really want to do this? Do it this way. And he responded to the Pharisees. Let me see if I can go. When the Pharisees hear, heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which command, commandment is in the law is the greatest? And he said to them, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second one is like it. You should love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is summarized, the whole ministry of Jesus in these two commandments. So in knowing God's will, is knowing God loves us. In knowing God's will, is knowing that we respond to that love in loving God and loving our, our neighbors. Jesus gave us the example of that. Put it together in these verses, in this response to these people. So we are invited today to engage, to, to be a part of that, to be active in those two commandments. And God will reveal every day what is it that is your purpose here on earth on doing those two things. 
on doing those two things. Following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Following the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Having a very active relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That will reveal every day. It will help us to know which way to go to fulfill God's purpose. It will help us to know what turn to make. It will help us to know that we are not alone, but God is taking us there. Even on the storms we face, in the situations of life we find ourselves, God's still taking us through that. The gospel today, the gospel of John, with, begins with the Christmas story that does not talk about a baby or a manger or angels or shepherds. It does not talk about Mary or Joseph. What does it talk about? That. The word became flesh and brought grace and truth to the world. And the world became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father, only Son, full of grace. And then, talks also about, in verse 1, did I skip it? Those were supposed to be swapped. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. When I look at this passage, and I, I read it over and over, and it's, it's poetry. Uh, John had a way to, to write. I mean, for, for some reason, he's not part of the Synoptic uh, books or, or writings of the Gospel. But he's, he sits on the side and speaks about... Christmas in a different way. And he talks about the beginning. He talks about day one. Again, not about a baby. Not about the shepherds. But the word. The logos. The one that came and became flesh. Verse 14. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And, he, and we have seen His glory, the glory as a Father's only Son, full of grace and full of truth. Now, again, when I was reading this over and over, I couldn't stop thinking that we are at the beginning of a year. Couldn't stop thinking, stop thinking that we are at the beginning of a week. And a lot of us find ourselves at the beginning of a journey, maybe. At the beginning of a plan. You know, a lot of us, we do plans for the year, right? I don't know if you still do that. Writing down the things that you want to change. What are those called? Resolutions. That's right. And we begin this year with a lot of hope that we will not eat so much cookies this year, right? We ate them all in December. Not no more. Or something more serious. I'm going to get better at. Or I'm going to do things different at work. Or I'm going to, you start setting up goals for you for the year. How long does those last? I mean, if you accomplish them, great, because I have not accomplished them. I put them, I set them up, and I, most of the time, it just stays at the beginning. Right? Month, two, maybe. In the last 10, 15 years, I don't think I have done that. I don't think I have set 
resolutions. I don't think I have set plans at the beginning of the year. I was just sharing with one of our youth. You know, I live by these five things. And I balance, those, I balance these five things. One is family. Said, that's important. I balance faith. That's important. Friends. That's important. It's not money. Like I was in the beginning of trying to figure out what I was here for, right? No. Fellowship is important. Food is important. It is. As a, as, a, as, a, as a way or as a sense of fuel, not so much about, you know, eating cookies all day long. Fitness is important. So, in balancing all of those things throughout the year, I don't have to do any resolutions because those five essentials as we go or as I go, I make sure I balance. If I miss on faith, things are unbalanced and I'm going to lean on something else. If family is not balanced and is not on point, I'm going to lose it. And, and, and fellowship, I mean, you engage with your friends. We do, we need. But the most important of all is faith. faith. And I think in trying to find out what the will of God is putting God first at the beginning of everything, of anything that you do or plan, is to put God first. Remember what uh, Matthew said? Let me see. I keep pointing to the TV. It's not supposed to. Not even working anymore. Okay, let me try one more. Oh, what does this say? Simple, right? Seek first what? Kingdom of God. So in whatever plans and things that you have, you already know God loves you. You already know God wants you to know that, and we know that, for God so loved the world. <clears throat> you already know that God's will is for us to love back, love God and love your neighbor. If you shake the Bible and something drops, it will be that. Right? Everything comes down to loving God with all your heart, Loving your neighbor as God loves us. And so as we do that, then we fulfill our purpose when we put God first. And God first, seeking first the kingdom of God takes us to, in my opinion and my experience, is to do God's will through those five things that I live by for. Put first in my family, God first. My relationship, God first. And my health, God first. And then I see God carrying me through the difficult parts of my life. I see God carrying me through the crisis that we find ourselves. I see God holding us. You know, we have seen, let me see if it works again. Oh, the other way. Maybe that's why I don't use this, because it, it's just more distraction. Have you heard that saying, after a storm comes, what? I liked it for a long time, but I like this one better. God is in the storm with us, not after God is the peace and the calm that we're looking for. 
So in putting God's first, we will find ourselves. I'm, I'm sure we all. And if you're not in one storm right now, well, good for you. Blessings. But if you are yourself, I think it's important to understand that God is with us through that. Why? Because God loves us. God had let us already know. And God is inviting us to love back and follow Him. Close every day. Have that special relationship with the Lord actively. As I was talking to this young man, I said, you know, engage in faith. Engage in faith. Have that intimate relationship with the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God. Jesus' words were words of action. When you look at the gospel today, it tells us that Jesus had a purpose to be here. And for him to fulfill that purpose was to do God's will first. You see that John, John the Baptist had a purpose. But in doing that purpose, he needed to know first the will of God. And that's why he was saying, you know, over and over, I am not the light. Jesus is the light. I'm just a messenger. I'm just the one that is supposed to prepare the way for Jesus. I'm just here just facilitating. So he had a purpose in doing God's will. So as you begin this year, as you begin this time in your life or whatever it is that you're planning for this year to be. I mean, there's a lot of things up in the air that we don't know, but we do know these three things. One is that God loves you. God is with you, even through the storms. Two is that God wants us to respond. And however that is, you not, might not be here preaching God's word, but you are a preacher because you can speak God's word through your own life. Respond to God's love by loving others. And the third thing is just to follow. Follow Christ. Set an example for us. Very clear. And when these people ask him, you know, which one is the most important, he answered that for a reason for us. To know that everything summarized into loving God and loving your neighbor. And Jesus Set an example for us. May God bless you as you put God first. May God bless you as you seek the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God are things that we can do here on earth, not in heaven, but right now as we begin this year. May God bless you. Let us stand and do a, I will call, beginning of the year prayer. So stand as you're able, and we're going to close this message with a special blessing. You need this? Thank you. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your words and your action. You have existed from the beginning and being with us all this time. As we begin this new year and as we think about the beginning of, Whatever is it that we're planning or goals or resolutions, let us put you first. Help us to accomplish those things that go along your plan and your will. You have revealed to us what your will is, and that is for us to know that you love us. You send your son to die for us so we can have the beautiful everlasting life. But in doing that, you have also revealed to us that we need to respond to that love. To you and to those that are around us. 
May this year be a year of blessing for this congregation and for all the people that are here, for those that are listening at their homes. May this year be a year of blessing in knowing that you are with us in the middle of everything that we're going through. In knowing that we're not alone. In knowing that your presence is with us, speaking and doing. Thank you for that gift, Lord. Bless us with your presence and your Holy Spirit as we go through this year and through our journeys. We pray always in your name, Jesus Christ. And we say, Amen. 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 We are going to be singing Away in a Manger. No crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the Jesus, no crying he makes. I love you, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is night. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay close by me forever. children in your tender care and fill us for heaven to live with you there you to join me with the words of the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty Creator, Creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the time that we can, uh, right there in your places or at home, lift up those that are in need. I'm going to invite Jessica to lead us with the prayers for this morning. If you have a need, you can text us, you can email us, you can call us uh, and request in those prayers. Um, I know there's a lot of need out in the world, so it's always good to know that we're praying for one another. So let us pray. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You make yourself known in the gift of language in diverse forms. Draw our attention to those who communicate through sign, braille, and technology. Make your church a place where all methods of communication are celebrated. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Creating God, the sun greets us anew each morning. Thank you for waking us up today to witness and share your abundance. Awaken us always to your wisdom and deepen our care for your natural world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Emmanuel, in your name we are assured that you are with us. Train nations and peoples to honor and respect one another, especially those whose names identifies 
have been mistreated, neglected, or oppressed. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You adopt us as your beloved ones. Accompany parents and children navigating the adoption process, especially those in the foster system. Sustain those struggling with infertility or pregnancy loss. Today we want to pray especially for the Bosques family, Alicia and her family, Emma and her daughter, John Coso, for Jenny, for Dennis, for Antonio Gaspar, John Myers, for Samian Welch, for Francis, for Jim Pulley, for Marty's brother, Paul Wenk, for Dave Cotron, for Gustavo and Cynthia and her baby girl, Randy, for Dwayne Bryson, Miguel Gonzalez, for Richard Larson, Millie Erickson, for Justin Lind, for Noah, Delicia, Stephen and Delilah, for Helen and Bob Shope, for Joe and Devin Quarles, for Caleb Hilbrand, for Juan Jr. Lugo, Alicia and her son Brayden, Imelda Saucedo, Adriana Hernandez, Diana Burkett, Charlie Lander, Aiden, for Nayola Lemus, and Jan's brother Arnie and Tom, for the Thompson family, for the Marine family, for Bonnie's sister Janet, for Bob Hardcastle, Adriana Hernandez, Gary Sullivan, Jim and Rosa Stewart, Christopher Neubauer, Carmen Cortez, Jose Maldonado, for Pat, Beatrice, Catherine Spalding, Maria de la Luz, Tom and Cynthia Corellis, for Pat, for Linda, for Joe, Finn Housen, Jan and Lee, Becky. Tenderly embrace all in need, merciful God. Receive our prayer. You journey with us through change. Guide those assuming new roles in the congregation or making transitions in their families, workplaces, or communities. As the seasons and the calendars change, equip us with the unexpected challenges. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We give you thanks for all who modeled lives of loving service. Lead us in your grace until, with all your saints, we enter the fullness of your glory. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us. We, we commend these prayers to you, confiding in your grace and love made known to us. In Jesus Christ, our Savior. Receive. Amen. Uh, give thanks for all your uh, support and your giving. I know we have the baskets here, and we always invite you to come down when um, you come down to communion and leave your uh, your offering here. If you still give an envelopes, um, if you do give envelope in envelopes, the envelopes are in the back. If you have not taken them with you, please do. Uh, we only order the ones of those that are um, given through uh, physical envelopes. So please take them. Um, we order them especially for you. If you're at home and you need um, envelopes, let us know um, so we can send you a box. And, uh, and that way uh, you can continue to support that way. I know a lot of you mail your, uh, your offerings. Um, but I want to encourage you to give online. Those are the three ways um, to give online. And it's, it's, it's becoming easier and easier. Um, so if you have questions, you can always call us. Um, you can call Susie, Susana. She has all the information about that. Let us prepare ourselves for communion. Um, let me explain again. Um, you are invited at home to prepare for communion with wine and bread. Uh, for those that are here, um, I'm going to have two types of communion. And by the way, I need two people to help me again because I did not prepare for. So if you have help with communion, please come down when I call you. 
But um, we have two sets of communion, which is the package that we've been given through COVID. Um, but also on this side, we have the pour over wine and the, uh, uh, the, the bread um, that we give regularly. So um, if you are comfortable, you can have regular communion. If you feel like you still need to be careful uh, with this COVID thing and you feel more comfortable with receiving package or prepackaged um, uh, packages communion, do that as well. So we just want to open it up for all people. Um, and we do have gluten-free. So if you can't have gluten-free, um, uh, if you can't have regular bread, we do have gluten-free um, bread for us. The Bible says that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. And broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. And gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant and my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith and increase our hope and bring to birth the justice and the joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In Christ's manger, at Christ's table, come, see what God makes known for you. Amen. Amen. Please come forward if you are able to help today.
the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare. The body and the blood of Christ lead us from this place nourished and forgiven into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A couple of announcements for this week. Happy birthday. Uh, to those that are celebrating birthdays this uh, this week, it's Zachariah, Zachariah uh, Hawkins, it's uh, Andrea's uh, husband. Happy birthday, Senor. Ruth Scourt, some of you remember Ruth Scourt. She still gets our tidings. She called me once and said, for some reason I'm not getting your um, the, the tidings from church. She is in Huntington Beach, or last I heard she was up there, and she wanted to be in touch, and I know she calls some of you here and there. So blessings, Ruth, if you're watching us. Um, Corrales, over there, Tom, no, Tom, that's Tom. That's my, that's my son, Thomas. Oh, that's your son, not yes. you. Okay. <laughs> So this, we should put junior in there, right? He's not a junior, but he's... <laughs> <laughs> well, happy birthday to your son. All right. And then Luis Quiroz. So happy birthday to all of you. If you're not in this list and you, for some reason, we missed you, let us know. Uh, we're trying to keep up with all the uh, information in our system. Um, and a lot of times... Uh, we miss some of them, so let us know. Um, the tidings went out yesterday, and uh, it was the first of the month and the first of the year. There's a lot of good things happening this uh, this month of January. One of them is the annual, the congregational meeting that we have here every year, and so that's on the 30th, on the last Sunday of this month. So prepare for that. Uh, plan to be here. We need a number, okay? So uh, we want to encourage you to put it in your calendars. Um, what else is happening? We have Bible studies. Um, getting ready for that. Mr. Uh, Bill has the uh, guide for the Bible study, the preparation that you, the readings that you want to have that before you go into Bible study. So please stop by, Bill. Um, this is Wednesday at 3.30 in English with Ron and at 6.30 in English with Ron. Um, so please be here for that. Uh, if you have not been, maybe this is a time, um, a time of the year as we begin. Um, to be a part of that. And then if you want to learn Spanish and learn also more about Scripture, come on Thursday. Uh, Pastor Ramon teaches in Spanish to the Second ser Service families. Um, Bible studies for youth. Um, for many years, we, we used to have Sunday school. We haven't had for a long time. We used to have midweek Bible studies for youth. And um, we had a youth leader at one point, then one semi-helpers, and then nothing. So I think it's important to engage the kids. So I said, I talked to most of them. I said, you know, what if we do this? And so we're doing Tuesday nights Bible studies for you. So that's the youth night for all of our youth to be here. So if you have children that are in middle school, high school, and you um, want them to be a part, please encourage them to be. They might not be the one saying, I want to go to church to Bible study. Okay, but please do uh, encourage them to be here 6.30, um, studying this uh, Tuesday, uh, since we're going to be doing a lot of planning and praying for the new year. Offering envelopes are there, council meeting. Now, council meeting for those that are part of council, okay, it's, uh, it's not on Wednesday, it's not at 6.30. It's on Tuesday, and it's at 7.30. Um, and for that reason is, I know we talked about it in the past, it was, was going to be on Tuesday at 6.30, but because of this youth Bible study, I had to push it an hour later so I can be with the kids and then be with the council. So that's uh, what's coming up. Le, the men's group coming up on the 12th. So if you want to join us, and we're still doing the same place, right? And we'll be talking about where else can we do it. Maybe a different time so we can get more people engaged and involved. But for this time, we'll be on the 12th at 12th and, uh, or at 1130 at the college area to meet. Um, community cell coming up again. This is a community building. People know about our church through this event. Um, it's been amazing. It's been a blessing. And it's been such a good thing for our community. So if you have things to sell, 
come and rent a space. It's only $15, and whatever you make is for you. Um, if you want to donate it to the church, well, that's good. We continue to raise funds to put those TVs up and the cameras, and so we don't have a phone ringing during the uh, prayers or, you know, anything like that. Still in progress. Okay, well, blessings. I know uh, somebody got a call today, but, uh, um, you know, those things are happening. I, even though I put do not disturb, still a call came in. <laughs> um, what else is coming? So um, Martin Luther King Jr., for about 10 years, we've gone to, to Balboa Park and helped beautify Balboa Park by moving, painting, doing landscaping, and things like that. It's a day of service, not a day of rest or a day off. Um, so what we do, we get here at the fellowship at 7. We do a prayer. We sign the waivers, and then we take the kids down to Balboa Park. We work for three, four hours. At noon, we stop. We have hot dogs, and then we drive back. Well, actually, we might stop at uh, get an ice cream or something on the way back, but then we'll be around, around one o'clock. So sign up your kids. There is um, a sign up there on the on the uh, table. Um, let us know if you want to help because we want adults also to help watch the kids because we are working with tools and things like that. So we do want to have extra adults and drivers as well. So please let us know if you're off on that day. That's the 17. Um, come and join us. You were going to say something, miss? Oh, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, are you meeting? There is the agenda on the tidings, so please pay attention. Um, things might change the order uh, on the order of that, but I uh, just want to let you know and give you, make you aware that you are required to be here for that. We are going to be online, um, but for you to vote or to approve, uh, we want you here. Super Bowl Sunday, prepare for that. Okay, because we have two cars here for the um, teams that are going to be playing. And so for you to fill them up, so those teams get to win. So if you want your team to win, start filling up those cards. So plan for that either by bringing cans, uh, food, soup, and or dollars um, to help those in uh, with hunger. And then on that same day, it's one worship together. That's on the 13th. Okay, one worship together. Why? It's a Super Bowl Sunday as well. So instead of having two services, we're going to have one. And then guess what? Next slide. Ta-da! We're going to do the first lawn brunch. Okay? It's a grill out. So we're going to have some chicken, some uh, carne asada. And then you just bring the dishes that go along that. And it's going to be right after church, one service. And then the Boy Scouts or Jake, who did all that project, wants to give you thanks. You're going to get probably a, a, a letter or a card or something from him, but he wants to give thanks to the whole congregation. So how cool is that? And he wants to do it on that Sunday. So he'll be here for both services and give thanks, and then we can go back out there and enjoy that beautiful, beautiful grass and uh, have a nice brunch before you go home and eat more. Okay? I think that's all we have. Please stand as you're able. And we're going to be singing this one song called Go Tell It on the Mountain. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born while shepherds kept their watching our silent flocks by night behold throughout the heavens there shone a holy hills and everywhere go till it on the mountain that jesus christ is born the shepherds fear and tremble when low above the earth rang out the angels chorus that hailed our savior's birth Go tell it on the mountain, O 
over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in the lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation, the blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Just a personal note, I live around the corner, I walk a lot to work and to home, and um, it's so sad to see a lot of trash in this area, just in this little, little, so we're always picking up and uh, looking over the little trenches, and there's a lot of trash, so um, I've been talking to these people that walk around, if you probably have seen it, if you're in this area, they pick up trash, and uh, we actually got to have a meeting here uh, with some council members of our uh, city, and, um, and we're having this Thursday the second meeting. So if you want to be a part of that to collect trash around your community, this is a time to get together with these people that are eager to clean up and not only to be the ones, but also encourage the city to do something more about it. So um, talk to me, send me a message. You want to uh, know more about it. We're meeting this Thursday um, here in our Trinity Center. So if you are interested, let us have a blessing. The God of hope fulfill, fills us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Rejoice in Christ our Savior. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen.